they seem to be running things very smoothly here. We're very, very, very happy. In the car with Kearney resident Gabriella Pace are her grandparents, who both just received their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. I'm just our driver. Luckily, my aunt, um, she's she's great, and she was our tech whiz signing them up for their appointments. In another car, Union City resident Guillermo Martin also just got his first shot with the help of his daughter, who signed him up for his appointment. Pretty good. No problem. Nice. No pain. What these strangers have in common is they're both here today with the help of family who helped book and drive to this site. Technology and access, both barriers for many in the vulnerable population. We realize that there are people who don't have cars or don't have the computer access that you need to utilize our site. And our municipal partners are picking up that clientele and are setting up additional sites where people can walk there. This vaccine is going to be for people who have a harder time traveling to get the vaccine. Epidemiologist Stephanie Salvera is referring to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Right now, it's being reviewed by the FDA for emergency use authorization. It could get approval as soon as this weekend. What sets it apart? It's one dose only instead of two that are spaced several weeks apart. And Unlike the Moderna and Pfizer that have to be kept at these incredibly cold temperatures, J&J &J can be stored in a standard medical freezer. So this can now be distributed in theory out of your doctor's office, out of any local pharmacy, without them having to invest in these um, deep freeze um, containers or storage systems. We can send people out to people who are homebound, for example, um, and vaccinate them at home. We can um, have this go around in mobile units more easily than we can with Moderna and Pfizer. Should this application be approved, as it appears it may, we have been notified that we should expect an initial shipment of roughly 70,000 doses to be delivered to us this uh, to, to be delivered to us next week. David Drumler is the deputy county administrator for Hudson County. If we have the capacity to ramp up. We just we just need the doses. If we have a day where we do 1400 people, 700 first doses and 700 second doses, you know, we could theoretically switch to a procedure where, you know, we're getting all 1400 people vaccinated and that's it. In terms of our continued efforts to ensure an equitable distribution of vaccines, this would be even more vital. In the U.S., the effective rate was actually 72%. It was 85% effective at preventing severe illness, and there were no cases of hospitalization or death amongst the people who received the vaccine in their clinical trials. And so much like Pfizer and Moderna, if our goal is to prevent hospitalizations and death, the J&J &J is right up there. It's a very effective vaccine. 10th District legislators, including Assemblyman Greg McGuckin, have been campaigning to bring the vaccine directly to elderly residents in 55 plus communities. The J&J &J approval would make that plan even more viable, he says. If we're trying to protect the most vulnerable members, we should be bringing the vaccine to them um, as opposed to making them find a way to travel to a public facility uh, and risk uh, further exposure. Uh, on the way there. A third vaccine, potentially opening up new possibilities for more people. I'm Leah Mishkin for NJ Spotlight News.